In this demonstration, I will acquaint you with ANSYS Forte through this simple introduction and overview of the user interface. Currently, I have loaded a simulation case file describing the combustion in this port injected spark ignition engine into Forte. In the center is the viewer which allows me to visually inspect different visual representations of the CAD geometry, mesh, or the corresponding solution. In the upper left corner, I can access the workflow tree. The tree is designed to be navigated from top to bottom when setting up a simulation. On the right, you'll notice a second tree called the visualization tree. Here, I can change which objects are visible in the viewer. Near the top of this window, you'll notice a toolbar. The toolbar provides shortcuts to commonly used operations that pertain to file management, viewer settings, solver settings, and post-processing tools. Let's take a look at the workflow tree starting with the geometry branch. Here, tools allowing for geometry import are listed. Forte accepts STL files that describe single or multiple surfaces. In addition, once imported, surfaces may be partitioned using tools available in ANSYS Forte. Either way, once the surfaces are identified, I can use built-in mesh controls to build a mesh. Forte uses automatic mesh generation, so very little input is needed here. The only mesh settings required for mesh generation are the material point and the global mesh size setting. The material point tells Forte where to generate the mesh, which, in an engine like this, is near the head. Note that the material point should be inside the mesh geometry during the entire engine cycle. The global mesh size is the mesh size used throughout the mesh's domain. In most cases, further refinement is required for accurate analysis. When I am satisfied with the mesh settings, the simulation models can be specified. Forte supports the specification of very detailed chemical combustion mechanisms, allowing for thorough description of the combustion process and the resulting emissions. Under the chemistry branch, the chemistry set, which describes the combustion mechanism, may be imported. Here, the flame speed can be modified, allowing for mathematical control of the laminar flame shape and characteristics. Correctly modeling the introduction of fuel into the combustion chamber is key for simulation accuracy. For a direct injection engine, the spray model is used. For spark ignition engines, the spark model is used. In this case, the engine is GDI spark ignited and thus requires the use of both models. Crevice and soot models are listed here. Once the models are defined, I can confidently add and define my boundary conditions. Let's take a closer look at the inlet as an example. Here I can quickly define which surfaces are included in the boundary condition. The inlet is set as a total pressure inlet with a total pressure of 0.8 bar. Many different inlet types are available. These are listed here. The inlet also requires turbulence and temperature descriptions, which can be easily adjusted in this panel. Some boundary conditions, like the piston for example, will be moving throughout the engine cycle. The movement of a wall boundary condition is defined by activating the wall motion option and setting the wall motion type. Depending on which motion type is selected, the motion of the piston can be completely described by adding some pertinent engine dimensions or by adding a motion profile. The intake valves are also moving throughout the engine cycle. The motion of these valves is described by a lift profile which I have displayed. Note that lift profiles must be defined from 0 to 720 crank angle degrees. After completely defining the boundary conditions, I added some initial conditions to initiate the solver run. Often initialization conditions describe the composition, temperature, pressure, and turbulence of the fluid entering and exiting the domain. For this simulation, I defined initial conditions for the intake port and the exhaust port. The rest of the domain was set to use the default initialization conditions. Let's review the simulation controls. In this branch, I define the initial and final points of my simulation. This run used the crank angle base solver, so I've defined my initial and final crank angle, as well as the engine's RPM and cycle type. 
In the time step branch, I have detailed control over the time step settings and can easily set time scale factors for different equations. Chemistry solver settings, most importantly, define when the chemistry is solved. I can choose to have these equations always, conditionally, or never solved. For this run, the chemistry is solved conditionally when the criteria listed below are satisfied. This allows the simulation to capture the effects of chemistry during important events such as injection or ignition. Of course, data collection is an important part of simulation. That's why Forte has been designed to give thorough control over the output of a simulation. In the output control branch, I can capture spatially resolved data, which is written for the entire domain, as well as spatially averaged data, which is data averaged across the entire domain. In both cases, I can control at which crank angles data is written. I can also control which variables are written, so that the solver only writes data that I'm interested in. With my simulation set up, it's often helpful to preview the motion of the boundary conditions to ensure that they are properly defined. It looks like the motion of the piston and valve were appropriately defined. Forte generates the mesh as part of the solver run. I can preview the mesh using the Mesh Generation tool. For this case, I generated a mesh plot at the position of the exhaust valve opening. The final step is to run the simulation. In the run branch, I can choose between a serial or parallel run and define the number of partitions to use. I can change how I would like to submit the run, whether it be for a local or remote machine. I can define how I would like to restart a run. If I was doing a parameter study, multiple runs would be listed here. As I have shown, ANSYS Forte can be used to quickly define a combustion simulation for many engine types. This concludes this demonstration, overviewing some of the features available in ANSYS Forte.